In this video, we'll talk about scripts and libraries. So scripts are the top left pane in your R Studio window. And what it really is, it's, it's sort of like a Word document. And just like a Word document, it's usually called untitled until you save it and name it. Uh, but essentially what it is, is it's a running uh, running list of all of the commands and comments that you're that you want to make throughout your project. So uh, one thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't store your outputs. So here's what that means. Let's take a look at these things over here. This is a command that says set x, uh, assign x to the value three. This command is saying assign y to the value four. And this is saying assign z to the value of whatever x plus y is, which would just be three plus four, which is seven, right? Uh, and then this last command here is saying, tell me what z is. So what happens when we run all of these, right? So if I highlight all this and run it, it does all of them, it assigns x, y, z, and then it tells me what z is, right? The output for this last one would be z is seven, and it tells me that over here in the console. But notice it doesn't really do that in the uh, window itself over here in the script window itself. And that's okay, because it just keeps track of the commands. And as I said, comments. So what are comments? Comments are things that you sort of want to keep in there in your document to remind yourself, your future self, and other readers of your script document what exactly it is you were doing or thinking, just because it might not be obvious to everyone, right? So here, for example, um, you might want to comment saying what X means in the real world, right? Uh, or something like that. And uh, uh, the way to make comments in your script is to use the pound symbol, or as the kids these days say, the hashtag symbol. But essentially what this does is anything you type after that pound symbol, is not going to be executed as a command. Um, and so here, here, x represents the number of chairs or something like that, right? So this is just a comment that you're making to whoever's reading this script file. And so now uh, you could do that here. y represents the number of uh, tables or something. And the point is that now when you do all this, even if you have some, when you do all this, it's still gonna do the whole, it's, it runs it all, but notice that it doesn't really execute anything with these. It doesn't give you an error like, hey, I can't interpret this, this, these words over here. It just ignores your comments when R is running your, uh, your commands over here in your script file. And it's still, it did all that and it gives you the output again, right? So that's really the gist of what a script file is. It's a running, uh, or, you know, just like I said, a running list of all of your commands. Now, it's really tempting when you're first new to this to go directly to the console and to start typing out your commands, right? Like, oh, what's Z? Oh, it gave me, it gave me Z directly over there. You know, I can say X minus Y. Oh, wow, look, X minus Y told me what that is. But when you're doing a project, often uh, you wanna be able to replicate it later on, or you want somebody else to be able to replicate your own work. And so it's really good practice to not directly type things in the console. You could do that when you're exploring, but really, um, really you wanna type out your commands in the script file, and that way you at least know what commands you are running. And you want to get into the habit of writing out comments where appropriate so that, um, so that again, it's really clear to your future self and to others what you were doing. Now, in general, one of the best ways to learn any programming or statistical language is to use Google. And if you want to learn how to do something and it's really not clear to you, you want to try typing it on Google and seeing what other people have done, searching on, you know, and at some point, we'll talk through all the different uh, specific forums and uh, sites where R in particular is really uh, all the all the good commands are really documented there. But in general, one of the biggest reasons why you might uh, get stuck on something is this: Let's say you found you found this really good advice 
on a, a stack exchange, which is a website that posts advice. You found a really good thing there. Oh, wow, this seems to solve the problem that I was having. So you then do their command exactly as is. You do it in your, on your, um, your R, but it doesn't work. Uh, one of the biggest reasons that might happen is because that command that you found somewhere requires a library and you didn't load that library. So that brings us to this question of what is a library in R? So one thing to keep in mind is R is an open source language. So unlike other languages, other statistical programs like Stata, where Stata is owned by a company and that company is the one that usually creates those uh, all the uh, commands anyone can really create commands in r and um uh, and they can create new ways to to like let's say somebody creates a new way to graph data uh so essentially they can then have a set of their commands that they created and they might want to share that with the rest of the world so that that set of commands that they created that somebody else in the world created is called a package and what they do is they can bun they take that package and they put it in the internet somewhere and that that place where that package is located is called a library and now what can happen is anyone in the world can download or install that library and can use those commands so you don't have to wait for r to do an update or have a new version that will have new commands built in, but rather if somebody else in the world has created a command that you want to use, you can use their command as long as you download, uh, as long as you install and load the library where that command is. So uh, the cool thing about, in general, the script document is it often auto completes things. So let's say you want to, there's a package which has a command that you need, you can just start typing install. And yeah, look, install packages. And then you can type in the name of the package that you found, and then it'll do it that way. The other way to do it, if you don't want to write it out, is over here on the bottom right, where it says install, you can type the name of the package here, and it'll then press install. So like reader is the name of a package. If you click install, it'll then install that package. And sometimes if you've already installed it, it'll let you know that, hey, you already have this installed, you don't need to install it again. So you only need to install a package once, but anytime you actually wanna use the commands in that package, in that library, you have to, you have to do library and then the name of that package uh, every time. So for example, as in every, every, for every session, every time you open RStudio, uh, if you want to use a command that belongs to the reader package, you have to do library reader, and then it unlocks all of the packages in that. And same with, these are just examples of packages where, uh, that are common. Uh, and, and, but again, you only have to install them once, and then, but after that, you uh, type in commands. So what often people will do is they'll install the packages that they need as a one-time thing, and then they'll have something like this, just copy, paste it and ready. And every, every time they open a new script file, they'll sort of have this at, at the beginning, just ready to go in case they ever need any command from any of those uh, libraries. That way they're sort of already there. But anyway, that is uh, what libraries are.